Hello, it's Helen Godden here and welcome back to a painting and quilting tutorial looking at my e-design alpha blocks. And as you can see, we're going to look at block B. B is for bear, balloon and bees. Now we're going to, um, I'm going to talk you right the way through the painting of this one and the quilting. So if you're a beginner, this can be something for you to watch and see that it's not quite as hard and scary with the painting as you might have thought. And I'll talk you through it as we go. So let's have a look at our B is for bear. I'm starting off with a lovely chocolatey colour called Metallic Rust. Now the paints I use are from Lumiere by Jacquard. They're actually an American product, but I sell them on my website, but they are available pretty well all over the world. But they are a beautiful metallic pearlescent paint that works so well on black fabric. Pretty well any other acrylic paints you use just sink into black and disappear as a nasty stain. But you can see one application and this is a rich full colour. Now when that dries you can quilt through it very easily. It is washable, it is still fairly soft, it's not as stiff as some acrylics because it's got a lot more of the actual pigment and less of the Mm, the acrylic stuff that makes some paints very stiff and plasticky. It's got a lot, of, lot less of that. So when I'm painting, you can see I've drawn my design with my Panda pencil. I've traced my design through a light box or a window. And I've used a Panda pencil, which goes on white and will stay there until I iron it away. So even if my hand brushes over this design, it won't just brush off the tracing like chalk would do. Okay, so at the moment when I'm painting, you're almost seeing that white line being left behind because I want there to be a black gap. The little black gap is what is required in this design to bring forward the features. Now I've got my indigo and I'm just painting and tickling the colour into the areas that are behind another area. Okay, that's as simple as I can put it. So his front legs are in front of his body. So there's that shadow there. That fur is overlapping over each other. So just a little bit of variation with that blue. It just gives us variation. It doesn't even have to be all that, um, you know, intricate or scientific as to where I put it. Just put it somewhere for some variation. I'm using a square ended brush. It gives me good control. When I turn the brush sideways, I've got that straight edge to play with. Now here I've lightened his chest, bringing that forward. See, it's just a lighter gold colour. So on the edges of his front legs there, see how it brings them forward and makes him look a bit more rounded. Lightening his head, just up there on his forehead. And it can be a little bit brushy because he's a bit furry. There we go. See how that's just lifting those areas giving it a bit more depth to make him look big and bulky. Now there you go, see how I darkened it there? It now sits back underneath his chin. Because a bear isn't worried about a double chin, unlike some of us. <laughs> this is a beautiful copper colour, like I cannot get enough of that, look at it. Love it. Okay, so a lovely rich copper colour, because I know at this point I've decided my background is going to be blue, which is going to make the bear look really good. So the blue for, is for the bear, and then the copper is basically orange, so that's going to look really good up against the blue. Okay, so that's how I plan things, of which colour, you know, is going to bring it all to life. I wouldn't want to have all brown colours with the bear, like brown, brown and brown. You know, you want to have some contrast so that you can um, see the various elements. Now I've got my indigo. It's a lovely royal colour. It's stunning. Look at it. Mm -mm -mm. These colours, I've been playing with them for about 10 years and I never get tired of them. I just love how they look. No matter how... Um, skilled you are or not these colors just make your designs look fantastic it can be a very simple design you know, it comes to life with these colors particularly on the black now you can work with these paints on white or a different color but they haven't got anywhere near the same impact as they do on the black there we go here's the beautiful blue now this one is called pearlescent blue and it looks like i've painted out our um, bees but i will find them again and you can see i paint way over the edge because I know when I trim this block back, I want that paint to be right out to the edge so that I don't have to worry about 
a little patch that I missed. Okay, so I can be pretty rough around the edges there, which pretty well sums me up. And then I've got the beautiful magenta for the balloon, the lovely pink. So he's a big bear, but he's got a, a little soft fem feminine part where he just likes his pink balloon. A little bit of the bottom there. What's going to come next? Oh, I've got the black. Oh, look at that. See, there we go. Just giving giving him an eyebrow. It just changes everything. Look at that. Little nose. Oh, I've lightened it a little bit. And the little highlight on his eyes. There he is, watching that balloon. Oh, we had to find the bees. So I've painted some little wings with white. And their bodies in the yellow. And they will come to life with the stitching. And then on the B, I'm going with some turquoise triangles. Now I like those to be half a triangle, like overlapping over the edge sometimes, being cut off by the edge sometimes, so that it looks like a piece of fabric with blue triangles that I happen to applique on for this block. There we go. I think it's almost time for drying time. Oh, another eyebrow. Look at that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Right, so now he's nice and dry and I've ironed him and I've sandwiched him and uh, now he's underneath that needle and we're stitching around in those black gaps with my black thread. Now I tend to use black thread the whole time. Some, some of you might think, well, why doesn't she jump into a brown thread on the brown bear or something? Because with these paints, when I stitch, where the needle goes into the paint, it will leave a hole. When you quilt on normal fabric, the hole that the needle makes sort of closes up and self heals, you know, five minutes after you've finished the job. That's not the case when we stitch on paint. When that needle goes in, it's going to leave a hole. Okay, so if I stitched brown on the brown bear and the brown was a really good match and it sunk into the colour of the brown paint, visually all I'd be left with is a series of black dots everywhere looking like acne. It's not a good look, not even for a bear. Okay, so I tend to go with the black. It gives the whole design impact and strength. It brings back the initial design, which looks so good in the, you know, black Sharpie marker. Well, it brings back that strong design element to the piece so that no matter what colors you painted it, the strong design is still there. And basically I'm lazy. I just leave the black on my machine truth be known. So you can see how I use those black ditches, those black gaps that I left in the painting is where I travel to move somewhere. Okay, so now I'm finding the string of the balloon. There it goes. And wherever uh, one area touches the next, I just move on to that shape so that I'm minimizing how many times I'm cutting that thread and having to deal with that end. So I like to be very clever and see if I can Attach, attach myself to every shape without doing the occasional jump stitch. Okay, but sometimes you do have to, but that's okay. A few jump stitches there to, to cut out later. So that turquoise looks quite nice. There we go, around the outside of the B, B for bear. And pretty soon, I think I'm going to launch into the... No, here I am stitching a bit more of his fur. Oh, those bees. Here they go. Now, they look like not much until you add some stitching. Okay, there they are. Sound effects. Sorry. I'm going to jump those stitches away because when you start to quilt the background, they will just get in the way. So this design I call squared off and you can see I virtually make a square shape but then over complete it and sort of push through that shape making another square. So they're just a whole series of squarish shapes interlocking into each other. So every stitch line I make is either horizontal or vertical with 90 degree corners. So to get those sharp angles you actually pause your hands. If I didn't pause my hands, I would have rounded corners, like stippling. 
but although this video is going fast, I'm actually pausing my hands just for a split second each time I change direction and then I get that sharp, distinct corner, that change of direction in the 90 degree. The same way as if you were drawing that on paper, you would actually pause your hands. So I would suggest you draw this on paper and get the pattern sort of going in your mind. So you've got the mantra in your head of how to make this pattern and then you can go and work it on the background. And you can see I go, as I said, over the edge, even with my quilting, so that at the end of the day when I trim it back, I know that I've got plenty of quilting there to work with. A little bit of echoing on the bear, outlining some of those sort of fur shapes. There we go. Oh, and don't forget the shapes inside the bee. You have to continue that background patterning so it looks like it really is in the background and pushes other things to the foreground. A few jump stitches to cut away. And there he is. There we go. <laughs> Thanks for joining me for B. We'll see you very soon for C. That's education and inspiration from HelenGodden.com.